Okay, welcome to join today's uh, community meeting. Uh, for the status, uh, one point uh, fifteen, we are preparing the RC release, and uh, the target is on this Friday. And uh, uh, right now we have some, uh, still have some. Likely, we have two critical issues that we want to complete before the RC. But since they emerged a little bit late, uh, according to this date, uh, this RC date, so it's a little bit tight for us to catch up the setting. But so uh, let's see uh, if we can if we, we can make it or we, we need, or we need to delay the, the RC for a couple of days. And uh, right now for the two uh, issues, uh, we are either uh, not clear of the solution or not clear of the root cause. So we still need some time. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I have a quick question regarding 8265, uh, the first one in the list. So it yeah. seems like it's like a proposal for a future, right? It's not something so, that we need to handle. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at the nothing. if you look at the issue, there's there's a short term, long term. Right. Yeah, yeah. The long term, right. you're right. The proposal, we're not talking about that. I think short term is we've discovered that for certain S3 providers, uh, the one dot eight plugin still works, whereas the one dot nine does not work with any of the options. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. So I, I think the proposal for short term is let's test one dot eight with Valera one dot fifteen. And make sure it still works. Is, is that, Tiger correct me if I'm wrong? But I think that's the short-term proposal. It's just no no code changes, but we need to test it to make sure that one eight still works with uh, one dot fifteen. We've done some early testing at Red Hat preliminary. Seems to be fine, but it's not something that's officially included in the tests right now. Um, and it might yeah. be. This could be 1.15.1 even. Um, I don't know because again, it's a late breaking thing. Uh, it's just that. We've run across several um, S3 providers where some of them setting checksum algorithm to empty fixes the problem. But like the Hitachi S3 um, for IBM in certain certain configurations, that doesn't work. And the only workaround right now is to go to the 1.8, um, which is not officially supported with 1.14 or 1.15 uh, right now because we don't test it. Yeah, uh, I think the two great issues, we are clear that we want to have them in 1.15 says two ones, right? Yeah. Yep. And, and for this one, I think uh, besides what we have mentioned, uh, uh, we also need to check the impact. And uh, for example, it looks like it doesn't impact the menu. I'm not right. sure I, I just uh, see if it's a- uh, Yeah, I think Tiger. Tiger had a separate so, PR that listed mm. the, the providers that we know are broken with this. Um, um, I also documented in this issue as oh, well. Oh, is it documented in this issue already? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I think I think we we can discuss this uh later uh when we uh, uh later and uh to see if we want to this uh, want this in one point fifteen or one point fifteen point one. Okay. But then uh, 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 mm. uh sorry sorry uh, but then um in terms of the one dot eight verification uh, because we don't have all these uh, storage providers. We can run the pipeline, but probably everything should work. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I, I so would say I, I obviously. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm my 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 understanding is obviously we're not suggesting you know getting access to a whole bunch of storage we don't have access to in the pipeline now. It's let's just give the same kind of pipeline testing against 1.8 with 1.15 that we currently right. do with the upcoming um, I guess 1.11 with 1.15. Um, in other words, make sure that it's actually. Because when we when we tell customers, hey, uh, if one you know eleven is not working for you, downgrade the plugin to one point eight. We want to have some confidence that that, that 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 works at least in the same cases that we already test. Obviously, we're not testing on Hitachi or IBM or any other specialized storage. Uh, that's fine. Uh -huh. um, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Let's uh, see. We we need to cover more details later for this uh, for this one and uh, and uh, so uh, that is for the one point fifteen and uh, yeah we we continue to track the 
uh, the critical issues and uh, to see if we can meet the target. And uh, 1.16, uh, we are collecting the candidates and uh, we have started the, uh, the review of the candidate and the cover uh, uh, the, uh, uh, several of them. And uh, so we can continue adding the uh, candidates. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. it. And uh, uh, and the Beijing, Beijing team members are just uh, back from holiday, so uh, we, we we have finished the, the post FC manual task uh, before the holiday, and now we are starting the the, the RC uh, processing. That's it. And uh, so, uh, Scott, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so first, I'll give some background on the bug. Uh, we discovered um, with the Podify data mover that we have, um, if SE Linux is enabled. Um, you know, which is the case in OpenShift, but it would also be, it should, it, we expect this to be true in any cluster where you're using SE Linux, but it's just that OpenShift enables it by default. Um, the Podify data mover fails with a, with a permission denied error on backup only. Um, we track, we track that down to the fact that we're bouncing that volume read only. And so when SE Linux is enabled in a cluster, when you mount a volume, um, the, the volume um, files get relabeled, um, that the relabeling failed. Um, which means the regular permissioned pod doesn't have permission to access those unlabeled volumes. So we have two possible fixes. We actually tried, we had uh, before the Beijing holiday, we had two different simple PRs that just you know implemented one of the fix and the other. And um, one of the possible fixes was to ch change the SE Linux context of the pod uh, SBCT, which gives it additional SE Linux privileges. It essentially disables SE Linux checking in the pod and disables the, the, the relabeling. That worked because um, we now, the, now the cluster didn't care that the labels match. Um, uh, it was pointed out uh, in the comments on that PR that there are some cases that won't work um, if you're using restricted pod environments that, um, that SE Linux um, configuration is not allowed. Um, so an alternate fix that we proposed, um, again, as a, initially the simple fix, not configurable, was just to remove that read-only flag um, from the um, from the spec uh, pod spec volumes. Um, we had concerns about that with regard to the shallow copy, um, where we're because that's where we are actually um, mounting for Ceph that volume, changing the access mode of the PVC to uh, read-only many instead of read-write once. Um, so I did some testing with that, changing that um, again, you know, using the config map to set that to read only many. And sure enough, that didn't work. Um, we got an error because of the relabeling. So um, that's why I proposed this PR where it's configurable because the, relay, the, the, the disabling relabeling works in some cases, but not for shallow copy. The re remove read only works for shallow copy, but doesn't work for, um, for, for restricted pods. So this proposal is to add a new config, uh, a new um, argument to the node agent server and to the installer, um, it's SE Linux data mover. The default value is none. So if you're not using SE Linux, you can ignore it. Everything works fine. Um, if you're using SE Linux, you need to provide one of these two other options, either disable the relabeling um, if you're not, uh, which, which, which you need to do if you're using um, a shallow copy. Or if you have restricted pods, then you need to do the other one with read only. And if you're not using either one of those, you can pick which one you want. Um, so this provides a bit. So the summary is one new flag, optional flag. Um, if you don't provide anything, the default is no change to the current behavior. Um, if you're in a cluster such as OpenShift or anywhere else where you have SE Linux enabled, then you need to provide one of these two other options, values rather. Yeah, uh, Scott. So, so when we, when we uh, say, uh, removing the read-only uh, mount option. Uh, uh, that does that work for shallow copy of stuff? I, I, I that's that's where I don't think it will because um the and and I may be misunderstanding this. So Shubham or anyone else, correct me if I'm wrong. From my understanding, with that use case, that's where we use the config map, the the node agent config map to set the access mode. So um, we mount that cloned PVC with access mode ROX, read-only read mini. Yeah. Um, that does not work with the no read-only. Uh, I, I get an error relating to relabeling. So that's why I'm saying if you're using shallow copy, then you need to use the um, uh, 
the no relabeling which sets SPCT. So basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay. So, so, the, so, 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 so we do need to document. There's one case that will not work. You can't be using shallow copy and restricted posits together. Um, that's we we have not come up with a way that works there. You either need to basically, if you're in a restricted environment with restricted pods, then shallow copy is not going to work for you. Um, I, I think that's a relatively rare situation because Valero, you know, it, it's, it's it's kind of a cluster wide kind of service. So uh, I don't think most customers are going to be using restricted pods. Uh, but in any case, that is that is the one exclusion that this doesn't fix. That's the one use use case. Is if if your Valero pods must be run with a restricted SE Linux um, mode, and you want to use shallow copy, those two are not compatible. Um, but I think that's a pretty small edge case, um, and there may be a, a third option that we come up with in the future that we can enhance this with to fix that edge case if we ever run into someone that's using it and come come up with something. Um, I think right now, though, we can ignore that case and I would document and totally ignore it. But but basically, we have two options. One for shallow copy people, one for restricted uh, environment users, and for anyone that, that that neither of those special cases apply to, either one of the options work. So I, I would I would say the no relabeling is probably what we'd recommend is the standard SE Linux um, option because that there also could be some performance improvements. One of the things that um, people have documented with with the relabeling is that if you have a, a large volume with a lot of small files. Uh, relabeling can be a pretty significant um, delay in mounting that volume um, the first yeah. time. So this is another advantage of the SPCT approach is we just disable relabeling completely. Yeah, and and, uh, and based on our, our previous uh, uh, investigation, uh, one thing we are clear that uh, this problem is uh, it's a, it's about a problem of a uh, uh, issue about the Kubernetes upstream and as the Linux that. Uh, it it doesn't work with uh, read only volume, read right. only mounted volume, right? So yes. so that is so that is uh, one thing we are clear. And uh, based on this, uh, with uh, first of all, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we there's uh, without the upstream uh, fix, there's there is no ultimate uh, solution, right? Uh, because uh, for we have tried uh, several uh, ways right. and uh, for right, yeah, we have yeah, two we anyway. have two solutions in here mm -hmm. that both work for maybe ninety percent of cases. But we have those edge cases, whether it's relit, whether it's um, the restricted pods edge case or the shallow copy edge mm -hmm. case. Although shallow copy, I guess, is not an edge case yeah. for Red Hat. And, uh, but anyway, and, yeah, uh, yes, and if, if we remove the read only, as we just mentioned. Uh, we, we may face the issue that for uh, uh, for some some storage the, the shallow copy doesn't work. That yeah, is, exactly. Uh, uh, well, and, and specifically, uh, and, I, I've tested that if you if the PVC has an access mode of read only mm -hmm. many, then removing mm -hmm. the read only. Well, 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 sorry, no, no. If the PVC, yeah, if if the PVC has the access mode of read only many, mm -hmm. and we don't disable the relabeling, the relabeling step fails. So. That's why, again, the for the shallow copy use case for Ceph in particular, because that's where I tested it, um, but probably for others, any scenario where you're setting read-only many on the PVC, um, mm -hmm. yeah, you really need the SPCT um, solution. Yes, and yeah, but but uh, I, personally, I don't think uh, even the the SPC uh, flag. I mean, the supervisor that we we we, we are, I'm sorry uh, that that we are making the container as a Still per provider of container, right? That that is not look like uh, looking like uh, ultimate uh, ultimate solution for disable the relabeling because if we mount the volume as read only, I think Linux had no way to to uh, to, to relabel the, the 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 entire file system. Right, so, and, and, and that's uh, and that's why we need the SPCT because um, that's yeah. how, because basically because the file system is read only. Relabeling can't work. So if we set SPCT, then it doesn't try to relabel. And, so, and this is the yeah. other part that's important. It gives it privileges to access that file without mm. the relabeling. That, that, that's the yeah, key. I, I, yeah, but but I think we use the SPC option just because of the limitation of the Kubernetes upstream. Oh, you're, you're right. Uh, or uh, in and, other words, yep. yeah, yeah, in other words, if the Kubernetes could fix this problem, we don't need the SPC because I, I, SPC itself is still a Concerned from users because it's yes. super. 
uh, 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 yeah, uh, although uh, it's it's still more re it's still no more restricted than if you when you because if you're not using SE Linux in a non SE Linux environment, mm -hmm. then none of the SE Linux checks are happening. So basically, SC, setting SBCT essentially gives you similar. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's not the same as you know setting the pod privileged. You know you still don't you still don't the, get access to those no, no you know the host mounts or any of that. Uh, it's just disabling the SE Linux um, checking. Yeah, so, but but uh, to SE Linux setting the SBCT uh, is. Yeah. Uh, very close to setting the pre mode for the pod, right? Um, yeah. So, 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 so that, so that again, that's where that, that's why we have the options because mm. if you're if you're using shallow copy, mm. um, that's your only option that we've up, up, come up with. Um, now, as you said, it's an upstream problem with Kubernetes. I was talking to Michael at IBM, and he pointed to um, I, I don't have the, the link handy, but he's he's basically pointing out that they are working on this upstream. There will be a future Kubernetes release. I don't remember which version. Um, that will fix this. So yeah. eventually, so um, this goes away. But right now, with Valera, with Valera one point fifteen, this is a pretty mm -hmm. significant regression without these fixes in place. Yeah. So 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 we still have uh, another way out that is we will uh, we will rely on the upstream to fix the problem, and that is uh, the 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 ultimate. Or, or right. The, right. The, so so once that's fixed solution, upstream, right? and you're on a new enough cluster, mm -hmm. whether it's you know one point thirty two or whatever. At that point, mm -hmm. you can go back to none, and it works. But you know, with, yeah, with, with 1.15 being I, I, released now, uh, we need a solution that works for users today. Yeah, I, I, and you know, uh, we have discussed this uh, this uh, this uh, situation uh, uh, once once, and uh, I and uh, I also discussed with Daniel uh, yesterday uh, once more shortly, and and uh, we are. No, we are not really sure, or we are hesitating to adding this uh, uh, multiple flags to users because uh, uh, even though we added, we, we are just in patching or making a patching fix of the upstream. Oh. It's not uh, the ultimate solution, yeah, well, the, and the, the... Uh, so 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 we want to propose another. Another another way is like uh, we keep everything as it is of uh, Velaro, and uh, we uh, we add document limitation that the, the current backup uh, PVC read only configuration doesn't work for as in Linux. That is for the for the upstream. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah. We, we, uh, but but, we but then you still have to make... you still have to have a way for the user to to to, to disable that. Otherwise, you I mean, you can't do a documentation only if the code. Sets it to mm. read only, then it just fails. Uh, we, we we need a way for the users to, to to actually configure Valero to work in their environment. But then, the, the, isn't that uh, read only configuration in the config map for? No, it's not in the config map. It's in the it's in this pod spec in the code. If you, if you look at this PR, the, the changes you'll see. No, 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 no. Actually, actually, we don't need to do that. We we just keep everything as is. So we have the read only amount option uh, when the bio PVC. Uh, read-only configuration is enabled, but if a user want to disable this uh, read-only mount, user need to disable the entire backup read-only configuration, or they don't, they will not be able to use this uh, uh, configuration, or they will not be able is, to. Is that configurable? Benefit. Can that be done with the current code, though? Sorry. Does the current Valero 1.15 code allow the user to disable that? I, I didn't see that there was yeah, an option. We, yeah, if if user don't set don't set the uh, the read on uh, the, the backup PVC read only configuration. Uh, no, it still it still doesn't work. Okay. That, 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 that's that's where we ran into this. We, we no, weren't so setting that at all. The sorry, and then so the volume part spec volume mounting right mm, that is yeah, configurable. Yeah. We yeah. do that right. by default. Right. So, so there's two it things. It was configurable yeah. earlier, but then. Uh, we mentioned in the discussion that we were doing it by default, agreed only for every case. So that's what. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I recall that. But, but yeah. that is a, a very little changes. Yeah, that uh, right. That is a very little changes. That doesn't uh, 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 impact the decision of the current solution, right? Well, so if, well. Uh, we we need the point is there's no code right now that does that. So if, if we're saying we don't want to do this, we want to do something else instead. We have to decide what that something is going to be because without this PR right now, mm. modified data movers is complete is 100% broken on SE Linux environments. There there's no way to configure it with the current yeah, code. Yeah, yeah. Allow it. So, um, 
so so we can make the code uh, change like uh, if the configuration is not set, we will, we will not set the 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 read only uh, mount option uh, okay. or the volume um, source read only. So so, so okay. So 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 what you're saying is that um, we'd only set the read only option on the pod uh, spec if the PVC is read only. Uh, if we yeah set the PVC read only configuration. Okay. And so, so, so that that would solve SE Linux problems for the default case. Um, um, yeah, that's but, well, but what that's that means well. is that um, shallow copy does yeah. not work at all. Yes. For SE yeah. Linux systems. Yeah. Yes. Uh, shallow copy will be disabled. That right. means users are in uh, with SE Linux will not go with uh, a shallow copy of Ceph. Oh, correct. Similar. So, so 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 that so that would essentially mean that Ceph is not a good option for uh, for OpenShift users with Valero one point fifteen. Yeah, I think uh, I think that is a part of that part that that part is for upstream and uh, maybe we can we can check uh, discuss more and uh, we can find uh, the best of for now the solution for yeah, for, so, the, so, for the so OpenShift, so right, right now the only solution that we know of and and I've talked to to Michael at IBM who works on the storage side there. Um, and to several at Red Hat. The only thing we've come up with, uh, and also to the, we've, we've also talked to the, um, the SE Linux uh, experts at, uh, within OpenShift and Red Hat. And I think we, we, everything we've, we've looked at is basically we have two options. We remove read only or we set mm -hmm. the SPCT. So if you want shallow copy mm -hmm. on Linux, yeah. sorry, on, on, on SE Linux enabled mm -hmm. uh, Kubernetes clusters, the only way mm -hmm. to do that right now. Um, with the current version of Kubernetes is to set the SPCT. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so, so, so. Um, and I know oh, yeah. that shallow so, so. copy is a very important use case for the IBM um, team that's using OpenShift. Uh huh. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's the problem which uh, we need to fix for OpenShift. But then, so, but then, uh, so after after the discussion, Scott, let me clarify. So at least the no read only option is no longer needed, right? We oh, can I see. Because, because we can, yeah, it sounds like that. We can configure that based yeah. on the, um, yeah. the 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 Okay, okay. So let, let me let me step back a second then and say, okay, yeah. Um, let's propose a simple PR first that solves it for the non, uh, you know. For the, for, for the case where we're not doing shallow copy. And that is, instead of always removing the read-only flag, we just remove mm. it if the PVC doesn't have it. So in, in other words, yeah. we already have that flag that we pass in the PVC read-only, because we, we use that when we create the PVC. We pass that same Boolean into the pod creation. We use that Boolean to determine whether read-only is set in the pod.spec.volumes. Is that, is, do we agree on that? Yes, and and even that is a is a is a compromise for the current situation that we have the limitation of the Kubernetes. Yeah, no, absolutely, right? I agree. Yeah, and, we, and we all of these are compromises based on the current yeah. Kubernetes. We're we're working around a Kubernetes bug essentially. Um, that's yeah, that's clear. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so I'll I'll submit a PR that does just that. That's the first step. Um, I think mm -hmm. can, can we all agree we want to we want to get that at a minimum into one fifteen. Yes. Okay, uh, yeah. I will submit that to PR tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. then in terms of the SPCT thing for, um, for, um, shallow copy, um, one option, and that um, there may be other ways to do this, but one option would be to take something like this PR, but a simpler version, a single Boolean flag, you know, privilege SE Linux or something like that. But then the, isn't that, but, but my question is that does that need to be in the installation option or it can be something added in the config map? Oh, a good, that's a good. That's a good question, actually. Um, the config map, config map might might be a place for that, actually. Um, yeah, we could so use, think, reuse the node agent config map. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. We could just add a new. We could add a new entry to the node agent config, config map instead of installer, yeah. uh, and that could be SE Linux privilege or something like that. And if that boolean is set, then we set the SPCT. Is that would that be an okay compromise? So no API changes. It's just in a config map. Um, that'll solve the problem for shallow copy. Um. And if it's not set, then then we don't do anything with it. Yeah, I think that would look better. What do you think, Yohan? If if SPCT is really important for Red Hat and IBM, like a showstopper for one dot fifteen, uh, mm -hmm. like 
you, because Scott mentioned that the shadow copy is a really important use case. Yeah, because the thing is IBM. with Ceph, yeah. for, for, okay. with Ceph and large volumes, shadow copy is a huge imp improvement performance-wise, um, because otherwise the entire volume gets copied um, at a point versus just being able to sort of reference it. So um, it really does matter for performance for customers using Ceph with large data sets. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So so uh, that way we only need to add one. More yeah, it's just, it's just it's a boolean because because we we've separated yeah. from the um, read only part. So instead of instead, uh, instead of a, a, a new flag with three options, it's a boolean in a config map. Um, okay, and uh, and uh, all together, uh, all uh, all of these uh, changes. I mean, the removing the read only and add this as PC a uh, guarantee flag, uh, uh, as PCT flag. Uh, that is uh, for the current compromise. Uh, a yeah. compromise to the uh, we will be able to remove all of them in future right um yes but it's not going to be soon basically um mm. whatever kubernetes release fixes this you know say it's 1.33 um mm. once that's the lowest version of kubernetes that valero supports then we can remove it so yeah. so yes we can remove it eventually but it's yeah it's going to be slow because of, because we have to support you know a certain number of releases back Kubernetes wise. But but no, yeah. I think we all agree this is temp this is a temporary workaround to fix a Kubernetes bug. It's just that temporary sometimes is a long time with Kubernetes. Yes. Okay, so I, I, what I will do then is submit two separate PRs for these um, because uh, it sounds like the the read only one is is less controversial, probably easier to get merged quickly, um, mm -hmm. and, and solves the majority of use cases. But I will create both PRs. Um, depending on whether there's conflicts between them, one of them may be, you know, the 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 the, the second one may be a draft PR until the first one's merged. That's fine. Um, but I will submit those PRs later in the week. I will do the read only one first because I think that's the one that we know we want. Um, ideally, we get the other one one fifteen as well. But um, that's that's probably you know if that doesn't make it to one fifteen one, that's probably not a huge deal. Um, it's just that without the without the read only one, um, one dot fifteen data mover is completely broken on all SE Linux systems. Um, if if it's the SPCT one, that's just shallow copy that's broken. Um, so it's not oh you can't use it at all. It's it's slow for this one use case. So I think that's a sl mm -hmm. lower priority. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I st it's still it's still a priority for um, Red Hat, but it's not as big a priority as the first one, which is this totally breaks us. Okay, so so uh, uh, we will have the first uh, uh, PR for sure, and uh, the yes. other one. First PR okay. I will submit tomorrow, yeah. absolutely, and the second one we'll submit it relatively soon, and we can discuss it further. Um, Shibam West, does this plan work for both of you? Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay. 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 I'll. I'll okay. Um. I'll. I'll um. I'll, yeah. So I'll. I'll go ahead tomorrow when I submit the new PR. I'll close that PR. I'll leave this one open for now just so that it's so that we know this it's out there. Um, but I think we have a, a good plan here. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Scott. And uh Joan, please. Yeah, I have two PRs up. I uh, need some reviews from you guys. Uh first one is uh, ODP with Argo C D. Uh, just adds a backup warning if there is an included namespace that is being managed by Argo C D. What's this? And nice? second one is a validation error. Um, message fix. Okay. But, but do, you, do you think that has to be 1.15? Uh, uh, which one? Uh, the, the Argo CD uh, warning message. No, no, this is not that for 1.15. Okay, okay. Yeah. And also this one is okay, not in 1.15, right? Uh, yeah, but we would like it backported. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, so you think this one is more important, so better in one public team, right? Yeah, uh, it should be uh, easy enough, I think, for 115. Okay. Okay. Check that. Okay, thanks. And uh, Tiger, please. Yes, uh, so I was documenting some S3 issues that we discussed earlier. Um, and then um, today from an issue from ODP side, we're going to um, 
add one more case for um, invalidating backup repository. Um, so we did this. We we did this work a little bit way back, uh, where if you have a Velero server that's running, and you update BSL, um, that will emit an update or create event, right? And then backup repository will become will have stale information. Um, so then we have to call invalidate on those backup repositories so to update the backup repositories with with latest information. Um, so I'm proposing that we also do this when Velero startup um, for any BSL that could potentially be edited or updated um, before Velero finished starting up. So um, yeah, so because we were having an issue where we edited BSL when Velero is not watching, so it wasn't emitting an update event or create event. So, so what happened was when Velero, Velero finished starting up, the backup repository was stale. So, hopefully, this will fix that. And, um, and, and just Tiger, just make sure I understand. So before before your fix that was already merged, the situation was if you go if you modify the BSL. You know, change the change anything basically. Um, backup repository would no longer work, but we didn't update it, so your your copy copy backup just started failing. Um, uh, Restic at least. I don't oh, know yeah, because Restic has the path built in. So 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 at least Restic. But but in, in any case, there were cases where the where FS backup would fail because the backup repository no longer had correct information. So the fix you already merged was watching events, so that if you modify the BSL. That gets an event that invalidates the uh, packet repository, uh, which gets that recreated. Um, but the failure case we ran into was if Valera was down, um, and then you modify it, and then you start Valera up again, this wasn't happening. And so if we do the same invalidation on startup, that gets all the uh, backup repositories refreshed at startup. So this should um, resolve the situation that the users are hitting. Yes, exactly. But but do we need to invalidate all the backup repositories uh, during startup? Um, I if if there's a way to know if BSL was edited, um, or like not matching the backup repositories, so, um, could, could, Tiger, could could we every time when when we create a backup repository, could we add, could we add an annotation with like the generation you know or whatever of the uh, field from the from the VSL, that way we can compare those. Would that help? That might help. Yeah. Um, some kind. In other of words, if if, every, if if upon when we create the backup repository, you know, if we set that generation um, number uh, from the VSL, that way, anytime the VSL gets updated, um, we'll know whether it needs to be invalidated because those numbers won't match. So that way, we only invalidate the ones if they got modified. Uh, I don't know for sure that'll work, but it seems like it might. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that's the first thing uh, I can come out is like uh, you know, invalidate the backup repository means we need to re uh, connect to the repository and reopen the repository. That might take uh, times and uh, take memory if yeah. the backup repository is big, right? Right. So. And uh, also, we actually have uh, other similar uh, situations. Instead of uh, you know the backup config, uh, backup BSL is uh, modified. Like uh, uh, the, the like uh, for example, the the, the object store has some problem, and uh, we don't know this. And uh, uh, and uh, even. Uh, we don't know this uh, without, uh, you know, any backup or result connecting to the repository. So uh, even in the running time, I mean, uh, you know, even when the server is running, the backup repository may still be invalidated, invalidated, but we don't know, right? That is uh, something similar. And uh, we may need to consider all these things together and uh, come out uh, a, a unified solution to handle these cases. Uh, did you mean the case where uh, BSL was updated? 
no, not BSL updated. Uh, just the object stores itself just changed some way. And uh, we cannot connect to that. For example, the object store is down or the object store's data has been deleted. I mean, I mean, another option could be maybe you inv invalidate the, ob the the backup repository if there's an error, um, and that causes it to get regenerated. I, I don't yeah, know, but, but then you have then you have to do retries in the code and things like that. That that would be a, the advantage of the BSL approach is it solves it at the initial change, so that it'll already be fixed before a backup tries to access it. Um, that, I guess I guess to your point, there are other cases where we won't know there's a problem until we try to access it, and but I, I think in this case, because, and again, we already have the merge where if the BSL changes, we know that it needs to be validated because we know that that's, um, it needs to be updated. Um, yeah, that, that is, a, that is a, a couple of similar uh, problems. So, so when the BSL is updated, we literally need to, uh, at least to, to, to check the, what has been changed and, uh, uh, if required, we need to invalidate the, the, the backup repository. That is one thing. And the other thing is like, uh, uh, the PSL is not modified, but uh, the object store itself or the object data itself is uh, broken. We still have the problem. It's similar to the, the backup repository is invalidated or not accessible, right? Yeah, I, I just, I, it's, it's less clear to me that um, we need the same solution for both just because the backup, are, in the cases of the of the BSL changing, that's a specific event that we know that it's an expected event. We know it can happen. Um, we can plan for it, you know, by, by, um, by intercepting that like we're like we already doing with the thing that's changed. And the, the restart thing could be similar, I think, if we limited that to, uh, you know, verifying that it's changed. I, I don't know that's the kind of the, the more reactive approach of you know, things we wouldn't know until we tried. Um, I, I guess that the point is, at least in those cases where we know we need to uh, modify it or re regenerate it, um, like the BSL change, um, ideally we do that at the time the BSL changed uh, and mm -hmm. not wait for a backup that's waiting on it. Yes, and, uh, and we also need to consider that uh, what if there is a running backup or result? Because the running backup result may not use a modified BSL configuration, but uh, the invalidator of the backup report will use a new uh, modif um, uh, modified configuration. So there will be a conflict. Uh, and, uh, and for example, we, we have changed the, 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 the bucket name, and, but uh, the running backup result will use uh, the old bucket or write uh, or read data to or from the old bucket. But the uh, invalidating of the backup yes. report will create a new uh, backup report in the new bucket. It's 41. So actually, that, that that could be another problem. If you're talking about the case where the BSL gets modified while a backup's being processed, um, mm -hmm. like you said, that we already, we already loaded the BSL into memory, the backup's using the old bucket. What happens when you get to finalize? Uh, it's going to reload from. It's going to. It's going to look at the new bucket. It's not going to find the backup anymore. If you, if you actually modify a BSL while a backup is yeah. running, I think it's actually. And, and this goes beyond backup repository. I, I'm saying the BSL itself, like, like you said, the, the running backup has already loaded yeah. that into memory. It's using the Heavy old bucket. Uh -huh. What's that? Yeah. So so I I uh, I mean uh, I, I, it's the uh, first time uh, I see this issue, but I I mean. We may be, uh, right now I, I, I can come out with that, we may be careful to uh, choose uh, the time to invalidate the backup repository so that the backup repository is reconnected. We, we, yeah. we, we may make some you know, uh, control of when to invalidate the backup repository. Right. Although in the case that Tiger is running into, and this is a specific issue that we, that we ran into, um, mm. where it got modified while Valero wasn't running, um, that's clearly at that startup is clearly a safe time to do this. Um, if, if we if we take steps to only invalidate the ones that mod or modified, if we can do that uh, and limit it to so you know if you have two BSLs and you modify one of them while Valero is not running and you start Valero up again, we only invalidate the one that um, 
you know, that, that, that got modified. Um, that's startup is a safe time to do that. Um, if a backup's running, that's probably not a safe time to do that. Um, but if a backup's running and you modify the BSL, you might break the backup in any case, even mm -hmm. without the backup repository. Yeah. Issues. Yeah. So, so you mean uh, currently we, we, for for this issue, we only need to we only want to fix the problem that when without server is not running, right? Right. So we, when the without server is start, uh, we we invalidate the uh, backup repository and uh, reconnect. Uh, but do we need to so. do that? But do we need to do that when the lateral starts? Yeah, or, yeah, um, yeah. The, the case, process. the case we ran into, we do need to because if if mm -hmm. if a user modifies a BSL and changes the uh -huh. bucket while Valero is not running, uh -huh. um, currently, uh, even with the prior fix, that's not getting updated when Valero starts. So it's using the wrong backup repository metadata, which um, at least in the Restic case is breaking. I don't know if we've tra tested this in the Copia case to know whether that. Yeah, actually, actually, uh, even though the backup. Uh, Okay, even uh, for the copier parts, uh, even the uh, for any new backup result, it will always use a new uh, configuration. Right. That that right. is fine. But uh, yeah, I, I just uh, 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 think the same with Daniel. Like uh, for comparing to the to the problem that Vero server is running and uh, Vero server is not running, it's just a rare case. Maybe we, we can just uh, think uh, uh, all this together and make a unified solution. We but, don't need to yeah. make a solution, yeah, for the for the for the for the case when Valero server is not start. But 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 when Valero server starts, you you mentioned that it impacts the RESTIC backup, but but when it starts, it, it doesn't run any backup. So why why we need to invalidate? But because later. Back. So 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 in, in other words, if you modify the BSL while while Valero is not running, then you mm -hmm. start Valero up again. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That that RESTIC repository field in the backup repository is not valid anymore. It points to the wrong place, um, possibly. So then when you mm. run a backup later with RESTIC, it'll fail if we don't invalidate that uh, backup repository. Um, OK. But yeah, yeah. So that's what will, 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 will happen for RESTIC only, because uh, uh, I think it's because that that is because uh, uh, RESTIC is just uh, mm -hmm. referring yeah, to the uh, RESTIC yeah. repository identifier uh, from the backup repository. But uh, for the for the copy of path, we always always get the uh, things like a uh, uh, bug name uh, region from the the BSL. Yeah, yeah. So if that's RESTIC only, um, so so you, you want that go into the future releases, right? Uh, if that's RESTIC only, we we just need to limit it to the you know when the uploader is RESTIC. I think I think it's probably fine because it doesn't impact REST uh, copy of path, right? Uh, well. It... If uploader is only relevant for backups, uh, if this fails and restore as well, um, oh. then even if uploader is copia, if your backup uses RESTIC, um, that's still a concern. Yeah. Uh, so, so the current problem is not about the backup repository; it's not in the correct state, but about the following backup or restore will fail because uh, the problem, RESTIC problem, we just mentioned. Right. But, 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 well, because of the RESTIC repository field in the backup repository CR. It's, it's, it's still mm -hmm. the backup repository uh, where the problem is, but it's specific, that RESTIC field um, in the backup repository CR. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the other issue you were talking about where if a BSL gets modified while a backup's running, I think that's a totally different bug because that's not just backup mm -hmm. repository, that's BSL itself. That's actually a, mm -hmm. a big hard yeah, to but, fix problem. Uh, yeah, the, the same thing. Uh, if we, uh, it, it looks reasonable to fix it for RASIC because we still have to support the result for a couple of releases. But, but uh, if we change, uh, this like uh, to invalidate the backup repository on server startup, we will need to change it for both RESTIC and Copia. And uh, actually, Copia doesn't require this. And uh, this will also bring some side infection, like uh, it, it needs to reconnect the repo at that time. 
centrally for many repository. Yeah, that was possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we, we may need some continued discussion on this specific issue. Uh, I, I don't think that blocks 1.15, so I think we may, you know, uh, continue yeah, 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 I don't think this is specific to 1.15. I, I think um, yeah. it's something we'd want to, I think once we fix it, we want to backport it to 1.15 and 1.14. But yeah, I, I agree. This is not, no, yeah, I, I don't think any of us are saying this is a 1.15 blocker. Oh, um, oh. So so we can we can mm, kind of continue. Yeah. The, also, um, it's, it does look like, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure that's only a that, that this works fine with Copia versus either. We need to test it to make sure. You know, um, Tiger, have, have, have we have we uh, reproduced this in our test in our dev environments, or is this just uh, based on the reports? Uh, we've reproduced the restic identifier part. I'm not sure. Uh, but, about... but in terms of have we, like the actual failure on back uh, the pod volume backup failure that, that was reported, have we have we reproduced that? Yeah, um, I, I know. I know. I, I guess the point is we should test it to see to, to verify it. is this really just a rustic problem or are we are we also seeing a copia problem here because um, it's not clear I was looking at the the red hat bug where this came up and it's not clear to me from that that it's um, they pointed to rustic uh, identifier as a, as evidence that the backup browser is stale because that's the easiest way to see it um, but yeah. I, I don't know whether um, what else was going on there so I think we do need more investigation and testing here but um, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, basically, we, we need some sort of fix so that you know, if you if you again ignoring running backups, no matter if you modify a BSL without a backup running, um, whether Valera is running or not, um, the end result needs to be that pod volume backups and restores still work. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the issue here is we yeah. found a case where um, we don't think they're working uh, at least on Restic, um, unclear on Copia. Um, so I think we should do some more testing to verify whether it's both Restic and Copia or it's just Restic, because if, it, if, it, if it's a problem for both Restic and Copia, then that gives it a somewhat higher priority than if it's just a Restic problem, um, because yeah. we, we, you know, we don't have the workaround of, hey, just use Copia instead. Um, but yeah. uh, so we should probably do, but, but no, this does not block 115. So um, I think mm -hmm. those other 115 issues do take priority, but this still can mm -hmm. be investigated in the background and we can kind of come up with you know, something. Hmm. Yes, I, uh, let me add one more thing. Uh, may, maybe even for RASIC, the, RASIC, the problem may not be uh, required to, to fix uh, from the the repository level, I mean, the, to invalidate the backup repository. It's just a problem that the uh, repository identifier is not updated in time uh, or before the next backup or restore run. So once we, we uh, so, so uh, when we think about the copy path, if that works, why why it works? Just because yeah, uh, let's, it's let's wait until we see if copy works. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, yeah, we have, yeah, we may we have, have a better way. fix. Yeah, we may have yes. a better fix even only for rest. Yeah. 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 It, it, so yeah, it, 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 yeah. Okay. So, 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 so let, let's first verify that it works for rest versus copy. Also, I think I. Th you know, I don't think this is just oh, if it's if it's done, if it's if it's modified soon enough after Valero starts. I I think the way this is reported is that if you modify the BSL while Valero is not running, um, it never gets updated unless you manually remove the the backup repository. So it's not a question of waiting long enough for backup to start. It's that because that event isn't sent, we never invalidate it. We just report that it's failing, and so it mm. you know waiting is not going to help. Yes. So so uh, so. Overall uh, solution, so we need to make we invalidate, and uh, we also need to make everything up, up to date for short term uh, uh, fix. If that only happen for rapid, we may be able to find uh, some simpler way to do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's uh, mm -hmm. continue the test and discussion. This. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so do we need to uh, discuss this one? Um... And. Uh, well, I think it's relatively clear what, what we're going to do, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think what we need to do in the, in this time, the thing that's not clear is, you know, is this something that's timed it to include it all for 115.0 or is this something that we, you know, we'll, we'll have tested by 115.1? Um, Wes, I don't know if you have an opinion on that as to whether that matters. From my point of view, I think 115.1 is fine here. I, I don't see this as a blocker for 115.0 myself. Um, we're open to, to you know, other opinions here if, if, if anyone disagrees. 
But I think but, the, but, the task but, is okay. yeah. The, the task is just hey, we need to test this with the same kind of pipeline that we test the yeah. latest uh, plugin. Yeah. So for the test, I think it's relatively easy for us uh, to. Yeah. Um, to use uh, you know a different yeah. version of um, AWS well, plugin. One other one other question to answer as part of this investigation: Do we also want to release a new patch release of this on the same version? You know, patch GoLang dealing with the GoLang CDEs, you know, one point twenty two dot six or whatever, like we're doing um, or seven, whatever we're on now. Um, in other words, since we want to support this with the latest, um, do we want to do we want to rebuild it with the latest GoLang or just leave it the way it is? That that's another question we can decide it's not you know yeah if 1.8 if you no know, what we decided to support you know different s3 compatible storage i think probably we need to uh, support the 1.8 plugin a little bit longer which means we're going to patch the cves right exactly yeah exactly yeah. That, that, that's that was my thing in there that, that so yeah. so so from cve point of view we, we may need to make changes there in terms of you know go mod go versions and all that um but other than that um functionality wise you know it is what it is um it should work mm -hmm. as is we should test it you know obviously if we, if we hit a critical bug there's some change in 1.15 or 1.16 that doesn't work with this plugin we may need to modify something but assuming testing doesn't Come up with blocker bugs on it. I'd say the changes to this because it's a legacy plugin is should be limited to CDEs. Yeah. Great. And again, I, in my in my opinion, I don't think it necessarily has to block one point fifteen point zero. But if there's time to get it in, then certainly that's fine. Um, uh -huh. But but I, I think the SE Linux issue and that other issue that we haven't discussed yet, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, probably higher priority yeah okay uh let's keep the current uh, decision until we see some other opinions for this one uh, okay thank you very Thanks. much yeah and uh any other things uh Dagger? um just the two prs that were ready for review but um yeah that's it for me okay okay we'll talk them and uh uh we have one last uh, issue need to discuss that is uh, uh, for the for the other uh, great issue we want to make for one point fifteen. So uh, Shin has found something different. So uh, Shin can you, uh, share the details. Uh, yeah, uh, I found something from the uh, error log. Uh, I think this fix is for the uh, adding the volume mode for the backup he backup uh volume snapshot uh but from this log it seems the error came from the uh, the the not, not the original volume snapshot uh volume snapshot content and because we still don't know why the the original volume snapshot content is not uh, correct because the volume mode is changed from five season to new, but I think the proposed uh, uh, request uh, may not fix this reported error. Uh, that, that's my concern from this this issue and the, its related PR. There was one comment he, from Michael again at the, after that. I, th I think I saw where he was saying that the volume snapshot content um, is reused because it's see, that's cluster scoped. So that um, so I think he had some concern that the, that that re reflected that change. Um, I haven't investigated yeah. this issue myself, so I, I can't say much beyond what's uh, here. Yeah, actually, we have uh, we have the uh, the source uh, uh, VS and VSC. That for the more we have the source VS and VSC and uh, we we have the backup VS and VSC. Wait a minute, let me. Yeah, so you have the source VSC, right? So we should grab the mm -hmm. source volume mode as well from the source VSC. I think that's what what was yeah, missing. Yeah, uh, so 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 I think she means the problem happened for the source VSC, but the the PR is modifying the the the. The, the the backup VSC, that is uh the problem why I think, uh, it doesn't work for the current problem. And uh, and beside that, just uh 
yesterday we 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 received one similar issue uh, for our internal product and with the same error and the same result, but that is for CSS sample backup, not for data more backup. So it further proves that the CSS plugin may have the problem when creating the source PVC instead of for the exposure handling the backup PVC. Uh, sorry, the backup VSC. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is we might need both the fixes. The grabbing. Uh, yeah, but, but for yeah. the first, for the for the source VSC, we the, the cause is still not clear. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, the current problem is uh, just for source VSC. So the PR may not uh, have to solve the problem, but uh, I don't see any problem if uh, if we add that to the to the to the backup uh, VSC. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so that PR has been merged, and we will further check or discuss this. Uh, uh, of uh, because that that is not required. We will first check uh, further check whether make any side effect. If not, we will keep it in the merge. But uh, uh, currently we are we are just want to uh, say that we need to further troubleshoot on the current issue and find the root, root cause. Yeah, and, and, and um, Shubham, it, 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 was it clear from the background here that this only happens with Kubernetes 129 and does not happen with 128? Um, I think so. It made the field immutable in 129, 130. Sorry, not even 129. Oh, because uh, yeah. because the 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 bug the the issue says that it, the problem's happening in 129. I don't know. The link I found was 130. Oh, yeah, it's I mean, graduating in 130. Yeah, 129 plus. Okay. Yeah, they maybe they author it to the internal sample order, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but it's the background is is the same. But just uh, just just the cause is uh by the source VSC, source VSC, not by the backup VSC. That is uh, the the background background is the same. So maybe we need to uh, we we need, uh, we need some more time to uh, to further troubleshoot to find the root cause and the solution. That is uh. Uh, that is uh, what we want to say. And uh, we will also check this uh, today and uh, to see if we can find it. Okay, uh, Shin, uh, is that right? And uh, do you have any more comments? Uh, right, uh, no, no, no other things to say about that. Okay. Okay, we will update if we find more rules on that. Okay, uh, I think that's all for today's meeting. Uh, do we have any other things uh, or comments? Okay, uh, thanks for joining and uh, uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye.